We live in an e world today. The letter E is attached to everything. We've got email, e commerce, e banking, e books, and with all this e fluence on our lives, we've got something special on the menu today e jihad. I'm your host, Oves Mangalwala. The cyber warriors disseminate ideological materials to elicit support and indoctrinate sympathizers and subsequently transform them into recruits or freelance radicals for their holy cause. The internet has helped fragmented networks merge to form a global jihadist community that transcends nationality, age, gender and physical boundaries. A new generation of jihadis has emerged who need never travel to Afghanistan or Pakistan or Yemen or Sudan or Somalia or anywhere else in the world. Everything they need to know from ideology to military training is at their fingertips via cyber cafes, laptops or cell phones. But talking of jihad needs to be done in the correct perspective. Jihad is not only the holy war as it is being termed today by all media. Today we'll discuss this issue in depth with a local and international perspective. It's time for another episode of Wired and Active. Let's get the show on the road with the segment Keyboard Politics where we give you the news making the headlines on the blogosphere. The blog Treat Maestro covered a story about an MPA from the Punjab Assembly who was caught red-handed using a stolen credit card and then making purchases in the tune of Rs 80,000. Shumaira Rana of the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Group stole the cards from a visitor of a health club she frequented and decided to treat herself for all the work she does for her constituency. Now this woman is the member of a standing committee on religious affairs and Okaf and she is also a member of the Chief Minister's Coordination Committee for Internally Displaced People. By the way, I think the government should increase the salaries of MPs as well so that these poor people do not commit such crimes. The blog Gappu.com wrote under the header PPP's Bully Boy at his best in which he writes and posts a video of a PPP leader from the United Kingdom chapter slapping his opposing number on live television. The show is based and shot in the UK and one goes on to wonder if this is the image being projected by the ruling party for the whole world to see. The blogger said it best when ending his post by stating this is the first and foremost democracy we've voted for. Now I understand what Benazir Bhutto meant when she said, democracy is the best revenge. And lastly to a piece of news one did not see being covered by the mainstream media. PK Politics had a story under the banner, Vandalism by Pakistan Army Officers, in which they narrate the story of an NWFP government official who was beaten mercilessly by two army officials. Apparently, Major Asad and Lieutenant Heather of 32 Cavalry were not too happy with the job of Ali Anand Kamar, the Assistant Coordination Officer of Sheikh Yasin Relief Camp. So how did they react? They called in their troops and had the said man picked up, but not before beating him senselessly in front of everyone and humiliating him for all to see. To top everything off, they took away his mobiles, ATM and SIM cards. Now what is this? Thieves in PMLN, bullies in PPP and now the army too? All in the family? Where is this country heading? A lot has happened in the international scene, so let's head over to our Global Wire segment and see what's made the news this week. An international cyber attack crippled government and news websites in the United States and South Korea early last week, and analysts quickly suspected it to be the work of North Korea. Some of the attacked sites like White Houses and the Pentagons were able to deter the attacks, while other sites like the US Federal Trade Commission's experienced periodic blackouts for days. There's no concrete evidence to prove the links between the attacks and North Korea as they were traced to 86 different IP addresses in a total of 16 countries, including South Korea, United States, Japan and China. Media watchdog Reporters Without Borders announced the arrest of five more journalists in Iran, saying 41 reporters and bloggers were now behind bars a month after the country's contested election. The Paris-based group RSF said that they were being detained at a secret location and their families had been given no news of their condition. As of now, this has made Iran the world's biggest prison for journalists and cyber dissidents. 
And lastly, we have the wife of British Prime Minister Gordon Brown, who has kept a blog of her activities on the sidelines of the G8 summit, stepping up attempts to boost her public profile while her husband's popularity is plummeting. A G8 blog described her lunch in Rome, museum visits, afternoon tea and an audience with the Pope. But they also include detail of a previously closely guarded home life with the British leader. So how popular is the First Lady of Britain? Well, she has over 300,000 people following her as she enthusiastically documents her new life. We have to take a very short break right now. But when we come back, we talk to a retired Lieutenant General about Jihad, E-Style. 